Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Friday Mastermind. This is the first time where I'm saying the Trust Engine Friday Mastermind. Uh, so, so I will answer some of the questions in a, in a few minutes. I've been getting a lot of questions. Mortgage Coach is absolutely is live and well. Uh, it is a brand within the company Trust Engine, uh, as well as Sales Boomerang. So I did put a, a Facebook Live a couple of days ago because I got so many questions about it when, when the news came out. So check that out. But guys, this is a mastermind dedicated to mortgage professionals, not only being more successful, but being more valuable. Like to me, the way you are successful as a mortgage um, professional is you're valuable. And, and one of my number one goals is to eradicate the name loan officer and truly turn loan officers into mortgage advisors. So uh, we've got a special guest for the first time before we introduce Cody. What's up, Todd? You know, not much. It's exciting to be here. And, you know, it's funny. I, I really love hearing you catch yourself, say, loan officers and then switching it to mortgage advisors. And I love the rebrand. Congrats on Trust Engine, because I think that's what it takes. Right. I think the difference between a loan officer and a mortgage advisor is a lot of things. But one of them is the ability to establish trust by being that next level professional. And then, you know, always upping us in our wardrobe is Deborah Bird looking good with the sleeves today. Who wore it better, guys? We no, not highlight. We're all wearing the same shirt. We didn't even plan this, guys. Sorry, Cody. We should have sent you the memo. I know. I need a shirt. Yeah. But, you know, I got to be extra with my well, sleeves. Thank Deb and Todd, thank you guys so much for posting on social media and doing your part to help get the word out. Super grateful to you both. You bet. And I just want to add on to what um, Todd just said, that, you know, we're talking about bringing more value and, you know, relationships and any good relationship has to start with trust. And I even think trust comes before love. I know you had an awesome interview on Tuesday about re-falling in love with your business, but you know, before love, you have to trust. So that is the fundamentals of what makes you a great advisor. Can you influence and can you build trust? Which who better to talk about that than Cody? Cody Hartridge, welcome to the show, bro. Glad to be here and uh, appreciate the opportunity, guys. You guys are amazing. So just, you know, being here is really, really cool. Um, and I, I want to piggyback on what you guys just said. I think it's really important. Um, you know, I think a lot of originators think that we're in the business of selling loans, but we're not. Um, we're in the business of selling trust. We really are. And trust is the currency that we really deal in. It's not, it's not interest rates and fees or any of those things. The currency that successful originators are doing business in is trust. So I, I think it's, paramount like I love the new company you know logo and name and, and everything that's behind it so um yeah I'm ready to kick things off with you guys today how do we want to get started yeah well first of all I mean to me folks Cody has always just been the consummate professional you know from the first time I met him at a sales mastery event just the way the man conducts himself you're like he knows what he's doing he's a trustworthy good dude and and so there's just an aura it comes with that. Uh, I mean, he is one of America's top producing mortgage professionals. He's also a leader. Um, Cody, I know you have uh, recently a new leadership role. What what is your what what is your job your day job now aside yeah. from being a mortgage influencer on our channel? So great, great question. Thank you. So um, in in November, I became the uh, president of the Central Region at Cornerstone Home Lending. Um, Prior to that, I'd worked for six or seven years as our regional sales manager. And in that role, um, I was really in charge of helping to grow and develop our loan officers and help them to become top producing originators, basically. And so I did that um, side by side with, you know, building one of the top origination teams in the state of Oklahoma, where I live here in Oklahoma City. Um, and I think that if you go back and look at the numbers, you know, I've been in the top you know, three to five originators in the state for maybe the last decade or so. Um, and so the last six years, origination is, I've only been able to do it part-time because I've got 25 other origination teams that I coach. So um, just fully steeped in the business and, and uh, the coaching side of things, but I'm also originating on a daily basis. I was in a client consultation two hours ago with a gentleman wanting to buy a fourplex. So, you know, I'm still in there hustling every single day, like the originators that are watching today. And you're, you're also a Marine, right? I mean, you... <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, I was a lot younger, but yes, yes, I am a, a former, former Marine. Yes, sir. Well, I thought well, it was so a Marine, Danny... always a Marine. That's true. Yeah. You can't really yeah. get it out of you once they get it into you. 
it's yeah. pretty rough. Well, I think that's what makes this a, a great time because you you know what it's like to produce and kill it as an individual contributor. You know what it's like to coach, train, mentor loan officers, and it's still turbulent times. While I think this year is 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 looking like it's off to a better year, um, it's still turbulent times. So. Uh, why don't you kick it off with just speaking to that? You and Deborah came up with the title, or maybe Deborah, you came up with this title for today's well, conference. And, and that's what I was going to say is the reason why I really wanted to have Cody on is one, we don't have him on enough, and his energy and just his leadership, it's magnetic. And I first, I've seen Cody on multiple you know, stages. And I knew he's, he's been in the business for a long time. So he has seen all the different shifts and he's always pushed through and it, it never mattered on what the market did. He was always at the top. And I thought, you know, this year, like you've said, Dave, multiple times, it's, it's a year that's something that's unlike anything we've ever seen when you have 63% of the mortgages starting with either a two or a three, it makes it very difficult to get movement from people who would even want to list their home and either move up or move down. And so given that Cody has been able to survive and thrive and then not only himself, but then duplicate it with other teams, he also is a Marine. So he knows what it's like to go into battle and not always knowing what you're going up against, but being a disciplined, selfless leader and servant of training the mind and the skills. And so it's, it's always about the mindset and the skill set. And so Cody, that's why I really wanted to have you on today to just kind of bring that into this community for anyone who may be a new LO or to the other leaders out there who are leading teams or leading branches. Cause I've had a lot of clients talk about movement. And when I ask them, why are they making moves? A lot of it is needing more leadership or wanting more leadership. So um, you're, you're so great at that, that you know, not to put you on the spot, but that's what I was hoping <laughs> we could unpack a little bit today. So yeah. no pressure, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that intro. I really appreciate all of that. So, um, yeah, I, I started originating in 2001. Okay. And I was a, I was a subprime mortgage broker doing debt consolidation loans. That's kind of how I got started. Um, I, I used to joke or joke around that I probably single-handedly brought down the mortgage industry from 2008 to 2010, uh, with all the subprime loans I originated. Um, and it became all purchase money after that, you know, um, after going through through that period of time. So, you know, our title is like leadership through, you know, uncharted waters. Um, I, there are may, they may be uncharted to parts of this generation, but I don't know if they're completely uncharted. You know, if you go back and look at a, um, a rate chart, you know, I, I would have hate to have been selling mortgage loans from 81 to 83. That, that, ugh, that That's pretty rough, you know, where. You got to take an arm at 12% so you don't have to take 18% fixed. Um, things are, are, are better than that now. Um, you know, speeding ahead, um, well, not even speeding ahead um, uh, to um, when I bought my first house, I think it was 2000. I just gotten out of the Marine Corps, VA loan, right? Uh, seven and a quarter, and I paid two points to get that rate. And the interesting thing, guys, is, is and I want to, you know, I want to kind of speak to perception on a lot of this. Um, I remember going to dinner with some family members, some aunts and uncles, and they're like, hey, great kid, you're buying your first house. What kind of deal did you get? I was like seven and a quarter. They're like, whoa, that's amazing. Like we're paying 10% right now, you know, uh, or we're paying 9%. The reason why they were paying that is because that's what people with good credit scores were getting in the late 90s, right? It's just that not a lot of us are around that were originating during that time and remember that. So um, I don't know if it's completely uncharted. It's definitely new, right? And, and I do think that um, the last, I'll just call it three years, has really kind of just messed up perceptions for most of the industry. Um, the first two years, uh, manna falling from heaven, right? 2020, uh, 2021. And then, you know, the drop off, it's like a massive uh, hangover. Uh, the best analogy that I can think of is uh, Wiley e. Coyote, you know, running off the cliff, you know? That, that was kind of like all the mortgage loan officers, they, they'd run off the cliff and didn't realize what was going on, look down and, you know, down they go. Um, and so there's definitely some adjustments that, that are going to have to be made from a mindset standpoint um, going into these things. Um, Cody, yes, Cody, sir, go ahead. Look, I, I interviewed um, Rebecca Lawrence mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago, or maybe it was, it was last week, and it was, it was really around how to earn more referrals from your database. And, and she was talking about the ninja, you know, it's mm -hmm. mindset, it's skills, 
in its actions, uh, which a lot of what I'm hearing you saying, I mean, these are fitting into these buckets. Now, one thing I feel is different because I've been doing this for 37 years. I've, I've never been in a market where 63% uh, of mortgages start with 2% or 3%. Yeah. And, and where there's more credit card debt and where there's more equity and where credit card debt makes more. So, I mean, I really feel like we're in a, in my 37 year career, I mean, it's a, it's a very different market where there's, there's pain, but there's like insane opportunity at the same time. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? So, and I even heard another statistic. I don't, it, it's even a little scarier, but I think around 80% of all mortgages are five percent or below. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. Another twenty percent, so sixty-three right. percent or two or three, and right, you know, twenty percent more or four, and rates are at you know, a little north of six. Yeah, so um, I think the discretionary buying is over for a minute. You know, moving up just because you want a nicer house or in a different neighborhood or you want an extra room, you know, that's over with. But the fact is, is people are still buying houses. They still have. To buy houses. Now, um, I don't know about any of you guys or other originators that might be listening in, but um, you know, I interview every single customer that I talk to, and I want to know what the human story is behind why they're even looking at buying a house right now. What's causing you to look at this? And there's a reason that I, that I do that. Um, if you guys have never read the 42 formula by Jeff Shore, Check that book out and read it. It's really written for uh, builder sales professionals, but it, it, it applies to us, right? And I believe that the formula is if, if the satisfaction times opportunity are not greater um, than cost plus fear, then people just aren't going to buy, right? Um, and so I want to know what the dissatisfaction is. Why are you really buying this house? Okay, because those situations that they're dissatisfied typically are not going to get better over time. You know, if I've got somebody with, um, you know, in a two bedroom house and they've got a third kid on the way, that situation's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse over time. And so, and I know markets are all different, you know, in terms of um, their prices. Like I've got an originator in San Francisco in Dan, uh, Danville. And, you know, I think that was the market where someone paid a million dollars over for a house. Um, you know, they're, they're going to see some price drops. They're going to see price drops that are more significant than what we're seeing here. You know, so where I live, I'll ask my clients, you know, let me ask you this, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about waiting, do you think that the price of this home is going to be cheaper or more expensive later, right? Um, and so if the dissatisfaction is only going to get worse and the price is going to get higher, the real question at that point is, do you want that difference between now and then to be in your debt column or do you want it to be in your wealth column, you know, and just helping them to get past their own thoughts and feelings about this, you know, but I think it starts with interviewing the clients and understanding what the human story is behind why they need to move in the first place. You know, yeah. I, I, I do have people that will give me an answer that's they're making a discretionary move, you know, and I've got red flags up around them because they don't have a super good reason, except that they just want to, and they're going to be more impacted by some of these price shocks. Go ahead, Dave. No, no, I was going to make sure Todd, Todd, any questions you want to make sure we ask? Cody, and this we're, we're almost done with the first quarter of a four quarter. I know, you know what? Cody always crushes it. You know, I just I just love it, and I you know I made a note of the of the book, but I you know again we're talked about trust to open this up in conversation, and the fact is is that you're building trust when you ask that question, right, Cody? And right. then I love the fact that you're looking for the dissatisfaction. I always say you're kind of trying to rub salt in the wound, and Correct. I mean that's me. That's a pretty simple question. How do you? You know, how are you coaching your loan officers that, you know, that are in your group to do that more often to just get out of the whole normal conversation about just taking an application and quoting rates? Well, in our, you know, the, the, the trust methodology is, is something that we've institutionalized in my group and in my region. And so uh, most of our originators are coming into their conversations and asking those questions and having, you know, high trust conversations with, with the clients. Um, but for the people that are, that are coming on board and that we're onboarding right now, um, you know, we're teaching them these new methodologies because they're going to set us apart from the other loan officers that are just selling rate and price, you know, and that's no different than any other market that we've ever been in. It's just more pronounced now, you know, um, and I will also say that on top of that, once you do connect there, I mean, if you're not differentiating your value, like if you don't know your value proposition and who you are in the marketplace, you're going to be also be in a disadvantage to the more skilled originators that are operating in the marketplace. Yeah, it totally makes sense to me. What um, what do you feel like is stopping others from doing it? So 
let me let me talk about something that's a little bit bigger and i'm going to come back to that okay but it's going to come it's going to come back to skills all right um I talk to a lot of originators, not just here in my group, but in other groups, other companies, other coaching groups. Um, and I hear a lot of fear. Okay. I, I hear a lot of fear in the voices and the hearts of originators right now about the business and their careers and everything else. So I'll tie this back to the Marine piece since Deborah wanted, <laughs> wanted to include that. Um, yeah, I did serve in the Marines when I was young. For all the Marines that are listening, I was a Pogue. I was one of the smart Marines. I was a computer network engineer. Um, in addition to fighting and all that good stuff, okay? Um, and one of the most important lessons I learned there is um, how to overcome fear, okay? And they teach us in a unique fashion how to overcome fear. It's through the acquisition of skills and then the training and practicing in those skills over and over and over until they're automatic, until we intuitively know how to handle a situation without thinking about it. Um, most people will not go through the reps um, to acquire skills at that level. People oftentimes will say, Cody, you're really talented. Like, you know how to speak really well. Well, that's not talent. Like, if you look at what talent really is, it's skill that's been just practiced and honed and practiced and honed. Okay, I'm to Tiger Woods, you know, great example. Everybody says he's the most talented person in the world. No, he's the most skilled golfer in the world. Um, and everybody knows that he started swinging a club when he was like two years old. You know, none of us started trying to sell mortgages at two years old. If we did, we'd be unbelievable. So, um, you know, I'm going to bring it back to skill acquisition, right? If you're just a loan officer that's out there trying to present a cost sheet, um, you know, one thing, then you're going to have some problems, right? You need to be able to come into a conversation, connect with the clients on a personal level, establish a high level of trust, you know, provide them with a total cost analysis uh, through Mortgage Coach and use option selling. Right. Anybody that's using Mortgage Coach is going to be at a strategic advantage over anybody in the marketplace. OK, because it because of the option selling that's available there um, and then really being able to um, articulate what your value is going to be to them long term. Right. And I hope it's not just getting this loan done and closed on time because a lot of people can do that. Right. I hope that you can articulate what your value is going to be long term and how you're going to help them to professionally manage that debt. So, so you said something that I think is extraordinary, extraordinarily important. I hope everybody gets in this. And I'm going to kind of net this out of you. One of the reasons we picked the name Trust Engine is, is we live in an era of distrust. You know, so like, you know, the Edelman Trust Barometer, which Todd Duncan, you know, is the one I think I first heard talk about that. By the way, we're talking about Todd Duncan's high trust. Cody and I and all of us have, have grown up in that sales mastery, high trust community. Mm -hmm. For any loan officers that haven't read the book, High Trust, I mean, guys, it's it's a cornerstone of success going forward. Um, but 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 I love what he said. To be trusted, you have to have extraordinary skills. And 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 Cody, what are your thoughts on this? I do feel like there is a new skill that realtors need. There is a new skill oh. that loan officers need. And, and and this idea, I, I like what you called the human story, but I think there's a human story, and then we need to create a real estate investor story with everyone. Whether it's a first-time home buyer that is not going to own, you know, maybe is not going to own, you know, uh, uh, you know, a fortune in real estate. Five hundred doors. <laughs> yeah, five hundred doors. But but you know what? Everybody, like our job in mortgage and in housing should be to help people expand their real estate story. You know, like we got to know their human story and we got to like them, but our job is to create that real estate story and find out what financial freedom is for them. And then more than ever, like being a loan officer is, it's got a shelf life, you know, and with all the automation and technology, like if you can't create real estate stories for people and you can't help them you know, vision themselves buying investment properties, in, you know, duplex, triplex, uh, a family that has kids. Hey, let's start planning for a duplex or triplex when your kid goes to school or when they graduate from college. Like, I think um, that's a new skill that I do not think many people in our industry have at creating real estate stories for folks. And now with rates at two, you know, so many loans with such low rates, we've got to create opportunities. Thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. And so, um, you know, whenever I'm dealing with with my customers and talking with them, I explain to them that this is a long-term relationship, 
right? Um, that really begins at the end of this one transaction. Um, and that I do want to help them to professionally manage the debt and professionally manage their, their real estate wealth as they move forward, you know, whether it's a primary residence or through investment properties. Um, and so, yes, you, you have to be able to paint a picture for them about what their future is going to look like and what the opportunity is. Um, and there's a lot of people right now that are scared because, you know, rates are at all time averages, <laughs> not all time highs, all time averages. Um, and so we need to be able to articulate to that to people, you know, I'll, I'll have clients and I'll ask them, how are you feeling coming into this meeting? Oh, we're really nervous. Tell me more about that. Well, we know that rates are really high right now. And my response is, well, just, I, I totally understand that. I, my perspective is the very average. Like if you go back and look at each decade, going back to the forties or fifties, we're right at the average, you know, we're, we're right at where rates are supposed to be, you know, and then I'll explain to them how we, how we got to where we are. You know, I'll explain to them that they're, they're part of a, a generation of people that have grown up with this artificial low rate environment. And really things are just reverting to the mean is what we're, is what we're doing. Um, but we also know that it's a cyclical business and it's not going to last, right? And so when I talk to my clients, you know, the first thing I'm telling them is whatever rate you get with whatever lender it is, is going to be short term. Okay. And I'll explain to them why it's going to be a short term situation. Um, just so that they can get past that and get back to, you know, their dream of home ownership and wealth and the American dream. Love, love it. So, so guys, anyone listening to this, nothing you can do more in this market right now than skill acquisition. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why I do so much content on YouTube is, is to bring stories and strategies and help you guys upgrade your, your sales habits. Uh, we did launch the Trust Engine YouTube channel. So, it's going to be all around modern leadership. I just put the first interview with our CEO, Rich Harris, is up there. Check it out. But, but guys, this is one of the reasons why the Modern Mortgage Summit is so important this year, because it is such a transformational year in the market. And, and so, you know, we're going to have 12 incredible leaders. Kelly Zitlow is going to yes. be on stage. And, and, and she's going to be delivering... Uh, you know, Todd, what's the maximum time we're letting them go? Is it is it 18 15 minutes? minutes. 15, 15 minutes top. So so 15. So like we're, you know, our vision is TED Talks. You know, like there is so much you can learn in a in a 15 to 18 minute TED Talk. And so we've got these amazing leaders that are all going to be in person. Um, so we still do have some tickets available. Uh, Todd, do we have quite a few tickets available? And how can people sign up? Yeah, I mean, we've got, you know, we've got more than I thought we would have available. You know, there's 60 seats in the room. And um, I think it's just a great opportunity to be there live. I mean, you know, I hate to say it, like I look forward to sitting next to Kelly Zitlow and uh, and talking to her. And I talked to Josh Metal the other day and he told me about what he's going to talk about. And I think it's going to be transformational. So I think if you're in a financial position to be there, um, be there. And then I'm going to run a, a mastermind the next morning um, with whatever guests want to attend really to talk about um, what the top takeaways were and then how to take action on that. There's no extra charge for that mastermind. And I think it's just a, a fun opportunity to be alongside of people and a learning opportunity for using what, um, you know, it's the acquisition of skills that Cody mentioned. And I think there's just no better way to do it. And I've, I've talked to a lot of people who've been on the fence because they're just not feeling financially where they want to feel right now. And I just, I feel like those are the people who actually need to, um, hate to say it, write the check and show up and um, and create that momentum going forward for the rest of the year. Because the bottom line is, as Cody just said, it's cyclical. It's going to come back and you're going to basically in, in two months when you're cashing paychecks again, wish that you were in the room. And then I would say for those of you who can't afford it, then you know what, then get the virtual ticket because I know it's going to be a huge value. And then the last thing I'll throw out is, um, you know, we'll have to do a call on it, really how to host a modern real estate summit watch party. Because again, the Modern Real Estate Summit starts at, at uh, 1 Pacific that afternoon. And so again, those realtors are going to be in the room too. I mean, it's a to me, I'm looking forward to being able to come back and talk to the realtors I know and say, yeah, you know what? I was talking to Jason Mitchell, the number one realtor in the world yesterday. Um, and here's what I learned from, you know, from my conversation. Oh yeah, I sat next to Spring Benson, number one agent at your brokerage, if they're in real brokerage. And, you know, here's was my top takeaway from my personal conversation I had because I was in the room. I had lunch sitting next to her. I had breakfast next to her. I was at happy hour with her. All those things that we're going to have this unique opportunity of. Wow. Those are some bitching stories. I, I, you know, when I've shared why people should be there in person, I hadn't connected those dots. So uh, it should be pretty, pretty awesome. Cody, what are your thoughts on when people go to events like this? Because uh, there's, 
just because you went to an event doesn't improve your skills and doesn't give you a competitive advantage in the market. Like, what do you, what do you do personally? Because I, that's another thing I've noticed. Like, this is a guy that's coming to an event. He's very strategic. You know, I've watched you grow in your career. You're yeah. obviously applying what you've learned. Um, you know, so what do you, what are your thoughts on why people should come to Modern Mortgage Summit now? And, and how can they actually turn those skills into habits? Right. Or turn that content into skills and habits. Yeah. So, um, and I, and I, I'm, I'm going to, I want to say this real quick. The market needs our leadership. Okay. Our customers need our leadership and our realtor and builder partners need our leadership. Right. Um, I, I'm going to throw that out there and we can come back to it. Um, but when it comes to these kind of events, I am going there um, to learn and to become a better version of myself, period. I'm not coming to hang out. I'm not coming to go to dinner. I'm coming to learn from people who are doing better than I am. Um, and so even now, when I go uh, to any, whether it's sales mastery or any events, um, I'm going there for specific takeaways that will change my business. And I'm listening for them. I'm listening for the insights that will happen inside of me about myself and my own business and what's possible. And when I go home, I mean, that's where the Marine discipline comes out in terms of the implementation. You know, I will make an implementation plan. I will have measurement metrics that are going to go into place. I'll have an implementation calendar that I'm following so that I understand where I need to be after so many weeks and, you know, whatever it is that I'm measuring. And um, I will not try to do two or three or four things at once. I do one thing at a time and I single time it and single task it until it's in place and it's part of me. Um, and I'm going to go back to how we acquired skills in the Marines. We would learn a skill, you know, maybe it's fighting with a knife, right? But then we would practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it until it's just, you know, second nature to us. And so I will do that with myself, regardless of what it is. If it's, you know, a, you know implementing a script on um, how to get a realtor to say yes, I'll practice it over and over and over. I'm practicing in the shower. I'm practicing with my wife. I'm practicing with my friend, you know, until I get it perfected. Um, and implement it in my business. And that's how I have become a better version of myself, which by the way, is like the secret to all the success is to become a better and different version of yourself. But one thing I, I want to add to that, because I saw Cody, not only at sales mastery, but then at the end of November at high trust sales Academy. And just for context, you got to remember the the market had been tough. Like we called it, you know, people who were out of shape, that whole sales fitness um, and it was kind of scary times. And I heard Cody say that the best invest. And he showed up to both of those events at, at a time when market was very tough and pipelines were lean. And he didn't show up alone. He brought his real estate partner with him. He brings people with him. So to me, it just shows, one, your leadership, Cody. But two, for those of you coming to the Modern Mortgage Summit, or if you're hosting it virtually, bring people, you know, don't make it where it's just you on that bus learning. And then you're trying to go back and regurgitate or, or get people to your level, because sometimes what happens is there's a gap. So Cody, I just want to say, you know, thank you for being just the example. And then also I heard your interview with Ryan Hills on the <laughs> RE source. Yeah. And I love that you're someone that is in a leadership position, but you're also in the trenches. And on that call, you mentioned because you are a script master, like, you know, you know, that's part of that repetition and why you can probably show up with such confidence because you don't have to think about what you're saying, kind of going back to the whole Phil Jones interview. For those of you, if you didn't catch that one about exactly what to say, Phil Jones has said the worst time to think about it is in the moment. You shouldn't have to oh, be yeah. thinking about it. And, and so you've done the work, but you also revealed and were very vulnerable about how you had to get back and get on the, the phones and start calling real estate agents again. And you were doing it in the trenches with like your crew pit. So how, how's that going now? Now that Great you're question. back. Thank yeah. you. I love that. Hey, and something else, um, leadership starts with leading yourself. Okay. And I don't think that gets talked about enough, you know, you know, you're talking about leadership and this unchanging, start with leading yourself. Um, starting with like, what's the conversation that you're having with yourself about the market, what's possible. 
because a lot of people are telling themselves right now that, hey, it's a, it's a bad market. Like there's not enough loans, like all this stuff. Well, guess what? There's more than enough for me personally. I don't know about you, but there's plenty for me and I'm going to get it. Um, so, but what you were talking about um, prior to the pandemic, you know, I was a machine. I mean, I was a sales machine. I, everything was time blocked. I would come in, I would make the calls. I would ask the questions. I would harvest the referrals and it just ran. Okay. And when the pandemic kicked off, like a lot of my top producer friends out there. Okay. And you guys know who you are. Um, we literally had to stop selling because we simply did not have the team capacity to deal with the amount of business that's coming in. You know, we've all uh, been running successful referral only businesses for years and years. We have these huge databases. We have tons of trust and love with that database. They all know, love and trust us. So they all came out of the woodwork, you know, like the same week <laughs> wanting to refinance. So uh, we literally had to stop selling for a couple of years just to take care of everybody. Um, now, the issue is that the thoroughbred sales professionals in the industry thought that they were going to snap their fingers and turn it back on. And the human brain just does not work that way. Okay. What we all forgot is the pain that we went through to get to that point of success in the first place. Right. And we may or may not wanted to have gone through that pain again to get back there. Okay. But it's absolutely required. And the more you run from it, uh, the more you're going to run from your own results. Right. And so um, I literally had to kind of go back to this, um, you know, marine mindset of um, the obstacle is the way the difficult path is the way that I have to go to make this happen. And it came uh, back to me and my personal disciplines around sales. And I literally had to start with one phone call a day. OK, because I was like I would let all this stuff get in my way. And it's almost like I was an amateur. again. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and built that up to three calls, you know, had my, my old school, like, you know, pitch counter to track my sales activities and all of those things. And now I'm back in the groove and it's all good and everything's time blocked. Um, but you know, we're all humans and we have to get ourselves back into those grooves of, um, adding value to people, um, on a regular basis. And I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, the market needs us right now, terribly to be able to lead them in the right direction, right? And it's not just the customers, it's also our partners, which I wanna bring up something that's important because you guys have talked about listing homes and things of that nature. The majority of the agents that I, I talk to do not know how to overcome their own clients' objections about why they're not buying. They don't know how to ask high trust questions, right? That get to the dissatisfaction with the home that they're in. They may not even know how to discern whether or not it's a discretionary buyer or someone that really has a need. Okay. And so um, a lot of the conversations that I'm having with my partners right now um, are around their personal struggles with this. And I'm literally going in and teaching them, you know, a three-step framework that I use and teach with my originators to overcome those objections, right. Um, and help their clients to get past you know, their own roadblocks that, cause people are throwing up roadblocks for themselves to get to their own goals. Right. Um, and they can't get past that to get to the goals. And it's really going to be up to us to, to help with that. Um, because I don't see anything happening in the real estate community to, to counteract that. Um, and it, it will make a difference. And it's also a great opportunity for us to be adding value back to our partners, right. And to be showing them leadership right now. All right. There's like three questions I want to ask because I want to, I want to definitely go back to your clicker because that I think I just love that. I know the story behind that. Um, and then I also want to hear about your three step process that you're teaching your realtors. I mean, I think that that's really huge. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. This um, was introduced to me by my good friend, RJ Crosby. Okay. In 2011, <laughs> um, I went to my first sales mastery with Todd Duncan and I saw RJ get up on the stage and he's like, hey, I get 15 clicks a day on this. You know, and I was maybe closing like three or three to five loans a month in. Um, and so I went home and bought my pitch counter and I started getting my 15 clicks and it changed the world, folks. Um, I went from, you know, like, like closing 70 loans a year to three or 400 a year within a few years um, doing that. So um, that's the reason. Oh, and we have to measure our, if you're not measuring, like it's just not happening. Like, how do you know if you're, if you're doing what you need to be doing, if you're not measuring? So this is a, just a personal measurement device for me. Um, to make sure that I don't get to the end of the day and it says zero on it, 
All right. Now in my organization, um, we actually have like a, a social media group where the LOs actually post their pictures. Okay. Everybody has one of these and it's just, it's an accountability group. You know, we're being accountable, accountable to each other. And so on a daily basis, people are taking pictures of their pitch counter and posting it on that website um, just to say, Hey, I showed up today and I did it. And I'm encouraging them. If you roll a zero, post it, be honest about where you're at. Okay. Accountability is about honesty, being honest with where you're at. Right. And then moving forward from there. So that's the purpose of the pitch counter. Um, as far as that three-step uh, process that I teach, um, great book. I'm going to throw this out there for everybody. Um, it's called Objection by Jeb Blunt. Dude is a sales master. Check this guy out. Um, and Jeb, what is it? Who's it by? Jeb Blunt, B-L-O-U-N-T. He's got another great book called Fanatical Prospecting. I recommend it for everybody to read that. Mm. Okay. It talks about us being sales athletes, which is great. Mm. So um, objection. Most people do not understand how to overcome objections. Okay. And I want to give some backstory on this. When you get an objection from someone, it feels like rejection. It's not, but it feels that way. Okay. And rejection um, is, is a feeling that we get that is physiologically programmed into our evolutionary DNA. All right. Now I'm going to take you guys way back to caveman times. Okay. When we lived in caves together, um, if we got kicked out of the cave by our tribe, what would happen to us? We, we would die. die. Right. Some saber tooth tiger is going to come along and eat us. Right. Okay. And so the people that passed their genes on were the people that learned to get along. Like, Hey, don't, don't cause any waves. Don't cause any issues where you're going to get kicked out of the cave. Okay. So physiologically guys, when we get an objection, we have the same feeling in our bodies that's created during fight or flight, like literally fear of death. So rejection and fear of death are like the same physiologically. And I consider myself to be really good in sales environments, but I still experience that same feeling. I can't stop it because it is programmed into my DNA. All right. So we have to learn how to get past that. So the three steps that Jeb talks about in his book that I teach, um, that I've been doing for years and years and years. The first step um, is to essentially create what's called a ledge. All right. And a ledge is just a statement that gives you 10 to 15 seconds to get over your feeling and to collect yourself and be ready to respond. Okay. And it might sound like, Hey, Todd, um, I hear a lot of that from my clients right now, or I totally understand where you're coming from, or yes, I hear that a lot from my customers. I understand why you would say that. Okay. That's the ledge. It's just a statement that gives me a second to get my bearings. The second step is to give them a disruptive or ask them a disruptive question that will change the way that they are thinking. And the third step is to ask for the business or the next step in the process, right? And so when you put it together, let's say I've got a client um, and they say, Cody, we're going we're gonna to hold off for a while. You know, the market's just crazy right now. And we just, we're just not comfortable moving forward. I would say, Todd, you know, I totally understand that. I'm hearing that from a lot of home buyers right now. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that this home that you're looking at is going to be cheaper or more expensive if you wait a couple of years to buy? That's a great question. Probably more expensive, Cody. So let me ask you this. If it's going to be more expensive, do you want that difference to be in your debt and liability column or would you prefer that to be in your wealth column? Oh, now I feel dumb. Definitely in my wealth column. Okay, so would it make sense for us to sit down and look at these numbers and bring them into sharp focus so that you do have all the information that you need to make a good financial decision for you and your family? Dang, I want sharp focus. That is so good. That was yes, so, so, so but, but Cody, what if they said, like, let's let's take the role play here. Yeah. And I respond with, you know, I actually think it could go down. I think the market's going to crash and I'm waiting for some of the foreclosures. Like, I think rates will come down mm -hmm. and I think prices will come down. So I think maybe waiting. So great question. Now I want to be careful here because we may have some people in some super high priced areas listening. 
Okay. So what I'm going to say here may not apply to you. And I want to be careful because I do understand there's some regional differences because I manage offices in different parts of the country. Okay. I live in Oklahoma city and what I'll share with you, my friends, um, and Deborah, you know, this, right. You're just down the road from me, right? We're basically, I'm in North Texas from where you are. Uh, uh, no, Oklahoma is very different than North Texas. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on. It's the same bunch of rednecks. <laughs> it's the best state ever. No, just kidding. So what I'm going to share with, with all my guys that are out West, there's a migration happening to the center part of the country right now. Okay. During the pandemic, I did more loans from people coming from Arizona and Washington and California than I have in my 20 year career. And because I asked my clients, what's, what's bringing you here? Why are you buying a home now? I got, you know, two answers, cost of, uh, cost of living and either personal freedom or politics. Okay. Um, and that's not going to stop, unfortunately. So if somebody says, Hey, I'm, I think there's going to be a crash. And I've heard some of that, that gives me the opportunity to explain to them why that's not going to happen here right? Because our home prices are so stable in the center, center part of the country, because there is so much demand and because there is a shortage of inventory, our prices are going to stay stable, but they're actually going to go up, okay? As long as we have elevated inflation, the prices of homes are going to continue to go higher. As long as there's demand, they're going to continue to go higher. So we are not going to see the kind of crash that happened in 2008 to 2010, okay? We didn't, we, the, the quality of loans have never been better, um, we don't have people buying homes that um, shouldn't be buying homes. Um, and parts of the country, there, there may be some, some bubble, you know, some froth on, on some of the prices, but we simply don't have that here. And I'll share with them that I was originating during the last downturn from 2008 to 2010. And here we didn't lose any home values. They just stayed flat for a couple of years. So, um, and then typically when I share that with them, that, that helps them get some insights because they don't know you know, they haven't talked to a professional that's been through it. And when I explain those things to them, they're like, wow, okay, well, I didn't know that that makes total and complete sense. Um, so it sounds like it might be better to go ahead and move forward now. So guys, powerful. I mean, Cody is not a loan officer. Cody is a mortgage advisor. I, I love that term, um, sales athlete. Uh, you know, I've been talking a lot about how the industry has gotten soft and weak from a sales uh. perspective. And, and everybody, you know, everybody needs to be, you know, a great sales athlete. Uh, a number of you guys have asked for links. So uh, that interview I did um, in our new YouTube channels right here. But if you want to sign up for the Modern Mortgage Summit, we put a link in chat. There's also a link here. Also, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud of this um, platform that Dale Vermillion created for all mortgage coach and boomerang customers. So it is skill-based sales training, you know, make sure you check that out. Uh, but, but I love that term, that term sales athlete. So, Hey, Cody, let me ask you this. So let's, let's think we're not going to use the word sales athlete. Cause I believe that the best loan officer is not the best salesperson. They're the best advisor. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's call it mortgage advice athlete. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to, you know, like your loan officers, some of them on a scale of one to 10, you know, they use a mortgage coach. Every family is getting uh, a great advice experience. What, 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 if you're a coach and you are a coach and there's five things, everyone's listening right now that they should do to become a, a really high performing winning in mortgage advice athlete. What would be, what would be some of your, your coaching recommendations to folks? Okay, so maybe what some of the things I'm going to say may not be super popular, you know, but how about this? They're, they're the truth, okay? Um, you know, if you want to become a sales advice athlete, okay, and, and, and I love the, the mortgage advisor, oftentimes I'll say there's a difference between a loan officer and an originator, you know, um, same thing, mortgage, mortgage advisor, there is a difference. Loan officers just wait for the deals to come in and for the phone to ring, you know, the next apple to fall off the tree. While advisors and originators, they're, they're going out and manifesting opportunity out of thin air. Um, and so I'm going to go back to self-leadership, you know, um, start with what's the conversation that you're having with yourself and the market, you know, about the opportunity that's having. Um, and with my originators, there's some, there's, 
there's some fundamentals that we execute on a on a daily and regular basis um, that are very common in my organization, and it's it's part of our success model and our success blueprint. Okay, um, which speaking of the word blueprint, um, guys, if, if your leadership and management team can't lay out a blueprint of mortgage success for you, um, start asking yourself some questions. Okay, um, my originators, we follow a blueprint here for success in the mortgage business because. I've spent time looking at what are the most successful mortgage advisors in the industry doing, right? And I just simply copied those things and integrated those things into my business and my blue, my, uh, my blueprint. So um, number one, conduct a daily success ritual, right? Um, if you tell yourself you're not a morning person, it's because you're telling yourself that, right? But every single morning, like if you text me at 4.30 or 5 a.m., I'll respond to you. And it's because I'm up conducting my daily success ritual. For me, working out education every single day. I read an insane amount of books. If you can read 45 minutes a day, you'll read 52 books a year, which is what most CEOs do. So um, that's, a, that's a great success tip right there. I read a lot. None of the things I'm talking to you guys about are my ideas. They're other people's ideas that I've learned and implemented. Um, continue to invest in yourself, right? Uh, continue to invest in your craft, right? Do you know how to differentiate yourself from the other originators in the market, right? So for instance, if I ask you, are you the cheapest or the best originator in town? What are you going to say to me? Best. Okay, because those are those are probably the only two people that are getting any business, right? And I'll share this with you guys. Only only one to two. You guys brought up Ninja. Only one to two buyers out of every ten are true rate shoppers. Okay, if you go start digging, there is a study that was conducted by the CFPB four or five years ago. They did a survey of home buyers. Seventy five percent of the buyers on that survey only applied with one lender. The other 25% applied with more than one lender to see if they could get a better deal. And if you look at the numbers on it, it comes down to about one and a half to two out of every 10 buyers are true rate shoppers, right? The problem is that loan officers are in there trying to sell price and people like me are trying to sell value, right? And so if somebody wants to say, hey, you know, and I'll ask them what's most important to you and they'll say, I want the cheapest deal. I'll tell them right off the bat, I'm not the cheapest or the most expensive. I'm the best at taking care of your money, family, and home. So this will be an easy conversation for us to complete. Do you want the cheapest for your family or are you looking for the best for your family? And I'll help you find the cheapest, bankrate.com. Great place to go. Find the local internet lender and, and there you go. So being able to di differentiate yourself, right? Having a defined sales process that you move families through is very, very important. Um, it's not just take a nap and jump on the phone real quick and throw some quick numbers and hope you get the deal, right? Uh, every single client that I have, there's a formal consultation process that we go through. If they don't wanna do the consultation, we're not gonna do business. And it's because I've learned that when people won't get in my process and I let them control the deal, it's not gonna go good for anyone, right? And it's also the client that is gonna shop you to death and then leave you halfway through for someone for an eighth. Um, so I've just learned not to waste my time with those folks. Um, and last thing is continuous skill acquisition, right? Like going to this modern mortgage summit, um, anything like that, where top producing mortgage advisors are gathering, like I want to be there. I want to be around those people. I want to hear what they're doing, hear what they're saying, how are they winning and literally being a part of iron sharpening iron. And that's, that's why I'm here today is just because I want to just hang out with Todd Bookspan, right? Who was a top producing originator, had a top, has a top producing team before he became, you know, the win by noon famous author, right? Um, and, and Deborah and the influence that she has, right? When I met her in 2012 or 2013, you know, was working with her, working with her sister then, I think processing for, right? Now she's her got first this, production this, partner. Yeah, huge business. And then Dave, I mean, obviously an icon. <laughs> I'll hide out with him anytime. But my point is, is we are the sum of the people that we surround ourselves with. And so I want to purposely surround myself with not my sphere of influence, but my sphere of emulation. Like who are the people I'm getting around 
that make me uncomfortable because like they have a lot of success going on and I'm kind of intimidated by that, right? I want to be like them. So um, those are those are kind of the steps for me, um, you know, to be a successful mortgage advisor and the tips that I would give anyone listening today. Let me let me put a framework up real quick for folks. Mm -hmm. So so when you think of everything that Cody said, they they fit around what I'm calling this data driven mortgage advisor compass. And, you know, going north, the North Star is, is being a mortgage coach, you know, like being able to help a consumer have a clear vision, by the way, not of a loan or a transaction, but of their their real estate story. Like, like help, help people build wealth with real estate by making smart mortgage decisions. If you just want to do a loan transaction, you can use a fee worksheet and it works great. Uh, you know, know the data and educate with data. And like this whole call, like you listen to all the scripts Cody had, it's like he knew the data. He didn't even have to show charts. Like when you heard him navigate that conversation, both sides of that conversation, with, you know, now's a great time to buy, or no, it's not. He knew the data, he knew it locally, and he was able, able to educate a consumer. And I can guarantee if he was in person on Zoom, he would have had some charts, but, you know, it's it's turning your database into a data bank, you know, and that that means going beyond five-star service. It, it, you know, like, until you got a referral from someone, you don't have their heart. Like, you know how you know when you really have a client, it's when you get your first referral. And, and, and it's when, like, if you upgraded the standard for your database to, they gave me a referral and I did my second loan with them and, and it was by design, like you scheduled it, like, Hey, we scheduled buying their second home. We scheduled helping their kids buy their first home. We scheduled when they were going to have MI paid off and they're going to list that home and move up into that next move home. Like we literally are scheduling that at the point of sale. And then guys over here, it's like, know your numbers. What's your conversion rate? Uh, you heard Cody, like we all wake up early here. You know, I mean, I'm between four and five. And 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 if I haven't hit my goals, my prospecting goals, my the sales conversations I want to have, the help the business development, like you haven't done that by noon. You know, like you've got to win by noon. Uh, here is a... For anyone listening to this, like we'll go back, like your scripts were killer, Cody, but this was an updated script we made, Deborah and I made when we um, interviewed Phil Jones, which by the way, author of exactly what to say, super awesome book and interview. But does this align with how you would help a loan officer differentiate? Uh, any edits you would make to this? Just every time I have someone, I like to, you know, is there, is there a nuance that you would edit? No, you're, you're oh, on. it looks great, man. I mean, let me, yeah, let me take a picture of this real quick. <laughs> I'm going to swipe and adapt. This is what I meant guys by sphere of emulation. Like I just got my huge takeaway for the day. Thank and, you. And then Cody, you'll have to watch that interview because it was live time where Phil is like, oh, yeah, we built it. Is, yeah, it was awesome. We built this and it, it started with this and then on the back side of it, you said the same thing, Cody. Is it important for you to have that long-term strategic advice or are you just looking for the cheapest rates? Uh, right. you know, there is a way to, to flip that script. Uh, so we are at the five minute mark. Uh, you know, Deborah, any, before we hand it to Todd for, you know, Mr. Win by Noon Coach, anything you want to ask Cody or anything you want to frame? Well, I just want to make sure that if you guys aren't following Cody on social media, Make sure you're following him. He's been up in his video game. I've been noticing Cody, so good job on that. And then just to put you guys on the spot, Todd and Dave, I think we need to give Cody like a discounted ticket for him and an agent to come to Modern Mortgage Summit. How great would it be to have him live totally in a room? Can we do that? Oh, we, we will make something happen there. Let's uh, okay. let's let's uh, have to put y'all on the spot. One, Dave or I will follow up with you, Cody, but uh, <laughs> I love it. All right, and and so, Cody, any closing thoughts you have? You know, we want to give time for Todd to kind of wrap a bow around it and be the coach. But anything you 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 have this audience, anything you want to make sure this community hears before we run out of time? Yeah, I, I want to challenge everybody listening today to listen carefully to the story you're telling yourself about the market conditions, 
and what the opportunity is going to be this year. This year will be one of the greatest opportunities of my career, okay, because there's going to be so much challenge. There's a lot of loan officers without the skills that we've been talking about. And um, I will grow my market share more this year than any other of the past six to seven years. Okay, I gained 5%, my, just my branch here in Oklahoma City, 5% market share in a million and a half person community in a single month. Okay, so now is the time to be going and building your business, investing in the down market. And when it comes back, you will be highly successful. Boom, Todd. You know, I don't even know how I can follow Cody. I, I, you know, I mean, I laugh because oftentimes on this call, I'm like, oh, you know, like we still have 20 minutes left. Like we got to let's, let's make sure we make this actionable. And I'm like, you're like, we have five minutes left. And, you know, I mean, think about what Cody just said. They have a 5% market share in a community. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, congratulations on that. And, you know, I, I love that. He said, it's the greatest opportunity in your career. And, and I never try to make it about me, but I challenged you all back in December to make a hundred realtor calls in a day. And I did it three times on Zoom where you could all watch me live and do it. And guess what happened? My mortgage team was rolling along, kind of like everyone else having a mediocre month of down 50%. And then guess what? Made three weeks of calls in January or in, in uh in December, and then February is back up to a $10 million month. We doubled our business from January to February. And guess what? March is looking even better. And so it's, it's all about taking action. And Cody laid out a blueprint for you. And I think that, you know, he really nailed it. Daniel Harkavy always says, uh, you know, self-leadership precedes team leadership. And whether you're leading um, yourself as a team of one or you're leading a large team, you've really got to sharpen that saw. And it's, it's right here between your ears. And you really just have to be committed. I mean, it's just going to take action to get the results that you want. And so I love the clicker story. I was there. I've, I've got, in fact, it's funny. I don't judge me because I multitask. I have this sticker on here that says focus. So I don't distract myself, but I ordered some clickers from Amazon uh, while Dave was talking. Sorry, Dave. Okay. And, um, and I just want you all to think about how are you holding yourself accountable to the activities you know that you need to be doing day in and day out to get where you're going. And just try to figure out what you can do to put yourself in the mindset if you're struggling with that um, in order to make it happen. You know, who are the people that you can follow up with today? Like what realtors need to hear that three-step process that Cody talked about? What loan officers around you can you sharpen your skills with and practice the script, right? He talked about how the fact is, is that you've got to actually train and train yourself so that you feel super comfortable. You own these things. And you know what? I just love being here on Fridays. I love here. I've got two pages of notes that I took myself and I promise you, I'm going to go back and watch this. I promise you, I'm going to make my team watch this. And I would encourage you to watch it yourself again, figure out who else you can watch it with and have them uh, hold them accountable and have them help sharpen you and you become accountable. Because the best thing about this community are people like Cody and people like you who are watching this. So I'm just super grateful, Cody. It's always fun to have time with you. Honored to be here, guys. Couldn't be more grateful. So, so guys. Here, remember, go to savageinsights.com. I will always have the top interviews at the top of Savage Insights. Cody will be here uh, by Monday. Uh, right now, I've got Rich Harris. Uh, and guys, if, if you've ever got value from this Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, and, and if leadership, you know, modern leadership is something that you want to grow, uh, please subscribe to Trust Engine YouTube. Uh, in this interview with Rich Harris, our CEO, he shares three stories of how um, in his previous roles, he, he ran the cloud for Oracle and, and, and has led some of the biggest digital platforms in, in the world. And he tells a story about um, when Apple Card was launched, how they use data. He tells a story of, um, of Disney, when they launched Disney Plus, how they use data. And then my favorite story of all is he tells his story how when he was helping Toyota launch a new pickup line truck, a new line of pickup trucks, they were looking for like, how can we really identify who's most likely to buy a pickup truck? And it was beef jerky, people that buy beef jerky. And, and so there's a lot that we can learn in for, to help us as lenders by looking outside. Right. So check that out. Uh, I hope to see some of the top leaders at the Modern Mortgage Summit. There's also a link to sign up for that there. Uh, Cody, dude, you're the man. You killed it. First interview. I can't wait to interview you more. Uh, 
uh, Todd and Deb, super appreciate you guys. Uh, if you got value, give this a like, share it with three mortgage friends. Uh, anyone that you like in the industry, if you're a manager, um, I guarantee you there's 10 minutes. There's some micro content in here that you should integrate into your next sales meeting. If you like this call, give us a reaction at the bottom, you know, um, whatever you feel about the call today. And this is a wrap. All right. We love Bye. heart. Thanks, y'all. Good seeing you. Take you care, rock, everybody. Cody.